Hello everyone. You have just purchased the Girls Ink Slinger Precision Rotary Tattoo Machine and I'm here to give you a little demo. This right here is your turn screw. Turn it to the left and this raises and lowers your chamber so you can go ahead and insert your disposable tube. This is your needle post where we will place our nipple or grommet which will secure our needle in place. This is where we plug in our RCA cord to actually give power to the machine. So let's go ahead and set it up to run. This is your grip. I get these at Tat Soul. With your machine, you're getting an information sheet with the names of all the suppliers and the tools and products that I like most. Here is our needle. The proper way to insert the needle is to make sure the needle is soldered on the bottom of the bar. This is the correct way to put in the needle. This is the incorrect way. You can see here that the needle is on top of the bar. So this is incorrect. This is correct. Always make sure that needle is on the bottom of the needle bar. So pick up your tube and insert the needle. Now make sure that you don't bump the needle tips along the way or you very well bent and damaged the tips of the needles. And then you have a needle that's no good. With this finger, go ahead and lift up your chamber. I always put my ring finger right here so the needle stays in place and doesn't uh, fall out. Lift up your chamber with your other finger and go ahead and insert that in. If it's a little tight, then, you know, turn it to the right, raise it up a little bit more. I got mine in just fine. Once it's in, tighten it up so it doesn't fall out. Okay? Now we've got our uh, nipple. So I like to go ahead. Now you can see that the loop of the needle is facing to the right, and that's typical. Once in a while, you'll have a needle loop where the hole is opening on the opposite side, on the left side. Once in a while, I'll find a magnum like that. But 99% of the time, you know the needle is correct because the opening on the loop is to the right and the needle is being soldered on the bottom of the bar. So go ahead, insert the needle into the loop and secure it onto the post. Now, we need to put our machine bag. Before you set your needle correct, go ahead, loosen that up, and make sure your needle's not sticking out, because we need to put on our machine bag. If your needle's sticking out, then it's gonna get caught in plastic, and you're gonna end up tattooing somebody with plastic stuck in your needle. Go ahead and put on your machine bag. Just so. And then what you want to do is put your thumb here and push forward. This gives you an idea of how far out your needle is going to be projecting as you're tattooing. This isn't quite far out enough for me, so I'll loosen up my turn screw and I'm going to pull my tip back just a little bit. You also want to make sure your tube is nice and straight. Tighten that up. There you go. Next thing to do put on your rubber bands. You want to place them over the, over the needle post, under the machine, just like that. Now that's all twisted. I don't like that. So go ahead and straighten out your rubber bands so there's no twists. If there's too much twisting going on with your rubber band, then that can put too much tension onto your needle. No. And I'm very particular about that, so bear with me here. All right, so that looks pretty good. Oh, got a little twist. See what I mean? So now that looks pretty darn good. Now this is also what helps keep your knee needle very sturdy and very precise. So the last thing to do is to plug in our cord and turn on the machine. So go ahead and plug in right there. 
you can tell, and we all should be barrier wrapping our cord. Now, don't put your machine bag down yet. Let's go ahead, let's turn it on. Now, the, the reason for rubber bands is to make sure the, it's the, the needle uh, doesn't have any wobble, it's running pr very precise. And even without the rubber band, this machine is so highly calibrated that it runs pretty good. You got a little wobble, but that's why, but pretty good, but that's why we put the rubber band on. So when we put the rubber band on, you can see what it does. Completely straightens out that needle. Now if you've got your rubber band too tight, let me see if I can get it to do it. There you go. Won't run. It's too tight, right? So if you have a click it don't run, you may have your rubber bands too tight. Pull it back, loosen it up until you get a nice sounding running machine. Cover up with your machine bag. You can see that all parts of the machine are covered and protected from cross contamination. And go ahead, put the machine in your hand, however which way is comfortable, you like to hold it, turn on your foot pedal and uh, you're ready to rock and roll. So okay, so that's the setup with the machine. Now break down. So of course when we break down, I like to roll this back. Remove your rubber band. Now very important, when you remove the needle, do not just grab the needle and pull up. Uh, time and time, many times a day, week after week, month after month, just yanking the needle off. We may end up loosening the needle post and then it would have to be tightened, which is not a big deal. But I like to keep my machines in pristine condition. I don't want anything loosening. So the best way to prevent that is put your thumbnail right on that nipple or grommet and then pull your machine up off. Put your needle up off and pull it forward. Then there's no tension constantly pulling up on that needle post. And then of course uh, loosen up your little turn screw and I like to go ahead and get everything out at once, removing it forward, okay? Don't ever remove the needle, a dirty contaminated needle, this way, because then you go ahead and you get contamination all up in your machine. So a used needle, you always want to remove this way in the sharps container, of course. Now the nipple, I change that out maybe every couple of weeks um, because it's well protected by the machine bag. Now, if I've um, uh, subjected it to cross-contamination in any way, uh, then of course I would change it out and uh, clean everything, but uh, that doesn't tend to happen with me. So you're okay to use the nipple for you know a couple of weeks until you start to see a little bit of wear and tear. When it's time to change out your nipple, do the same thing you do when you remove the needle. Put your thumb onto the needle post and just twist and pull up and the nipple comes right off. Okay, that's your demo for the Ink Slinger. Um, congratulations, you got yourself a little powerhouse. Uh, I hope, I'm actually quite confident you're gonna love it just as much as I do. Thanks so much.